If you clicked on this video, chances are you already know what calibration is. If not, it's just a term used to describe the process of changing your TV's picture settings until you get the most accurate or best representation of the content you're watching. I'll be using the guide on the Spears and Munsell site which I'll link in the description. I have the Spears and Munsell 4K test disc to check my changes against the provided test patterns. Before starting calibration, the Spears and Munsell website recommends you calibrate in the dark or with the lighting conditions you normally watch content in. I prefer watching in the dark with the hue lights behind my TV set to 25% and the colour set to a static white. Before I dive into the actual calibration, I want to show you my current settings. If you want to see the calibration steps, skip ahead to the timestamps I'm showing on screen. I'd suggest sticking around as you may find at least one useful setting you may want turned off or altered if you're just watching this video out of curiosity. Turn off energy saving if you haven't already, step into picture mode settings and choose filmmaker mode as that will give you the most accurate picture. These are the standard picture settings and from experience the brightness setting is always set to 50. Some settings like the OLED light change depending on the picture mode. In the advanced controls most of the settings should be off by default. Color gamut defines the range of colors the TV can produce and I've left it on auto for now. You can change this to wide or extended. Gamma will stay at BT1886, I won't be changing this for now. White balance is on the second warmest profile as that's the one I find the least strenuous on my eyes. The red, green and blue intensities can also be adjusted here. In the colour management system menu you can adjust the saturation, tint and luminance of different colours. Other picture settings can be found in picture options. I think I turned off some of these settings when I first purchased a TV, but a lot of experts do recommend having the majority of these turned off as they can dynamically alter the picture, which is probably not something you want when calibrating. Grab a notepad or a piece of paper so you can make a note of the original settings before you change them. Make sure you're sitting where you'd normally watch content from to get the best results. The guide mentions you should watch some content, preferably a movie for 15 minutes before you begin the calibration. Alternatively, you can load the 4K calibration disc and watch the demo footage provided there. If you don't have a 4K TV, you'll have to pick up the 1080p equivalent and follow along. Some bits from the guide you can ignore as they pertain to projectors only. I am using the PS5's Blu-ray player for this as it's the only device I have at hand that I can play the Spears and Munsell disc. The Villaman channel has also done a comparison between the PS5 Blu-ray player versus a dedicated one which I'll link below. The conclusion being that there isn't a noticeable difference in what the picture looks like in a direct comparison. There are other differences like lack of Dolby Vision support on the PS5 but that shouldn't make a difference for the purposes of this video. STR calibration should be done as a priority as the LG CX may derive HDR settings from the SDR settings. We can quickly check that the TV is now in HDR mode by going into the quick picture settings and confirming that the text reads picture mode and not HDR picture mode. As I mentioned earlier, I chose the filmmaker mode picture preset as recommended by Spears and Munsell. With regards to advanced picture modes, we can find all of them in the picture mode settings under either advanced controls or picture options. The options you're seeing on screen are in the advanced controls menu and should be turned off. Pause the video here so you can check these against the options on your TV. Dynamic contrast is off. Super resolution is off. Color gamut can be left on auto as there's no mention of it in the guide as of yet at least. Gamma I'll keep on BT1886 for now too. Peak brightness is also off. In the picture options, both noise and MPEG noise reduction are off. Smooth gradation is off. Spears and Munsell have this described as edge enhancement. Black level is set to auto. It's described as black tone on the guide, so turn this off. Real cinema, I wasn't sure about, but the guide suggests that this be turned off too. Motion eye care, we don't want. This is labeled as auto iris in the guide. True motion is off too as we definitely don't want the soap opera effect if it can be avoided. There are other advanced picture modes but because there isn't an explicit option in the LG CX picture settings I think it's safe to assume the TV won't be affected by them. I'll include the options in the description if you want to know what they are. Because the menu on the Spears and Munsell test disc is in HDR, the picture settings automatically change to HDR mode. However, if you choose an option from the SDR menu, you'll be able to calibrate in SDR. The PS5's Blu-ray player doesn't support Dolby Vision or HDR 10 Plus, so I'll have to show you the HDR 10 demo footage. I'll be calibrating in SDR to begin with, and once I'm happy with the settings, I plan to copy them over to the HDR equivalent filmmaker mode. I'll show a direct comparison after I've gone through all of the calibration steps and see if there's a noticeable difference. It may be that the unit I received was good out of the box and I didn't need to calibrate. Even so, it's a good learning experience.
When you navigate to the contrast settings in the SDR menu, it will default the picture mode to game, so make sure you change that back to filmmaker mode. If you look at the numbered columns, you should be able to make out most of them by the ones labeled 1000 and above. The green color channel clipping boxes at the top and bottom will have a smaller flashing square in the middle. It's harder to make out on the other color channels in the video, but it's definitely there. In this mode, the contrast was originally set to 85, which I wrote down on my pad. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, the vertical columns from about 1010 are being clipped. The idea of this pattern is that you want to get the last column to be barely visible and for a smaller, darker square to appear within the coloured boxes at the top and bottom. As a test, I set the contrast to 100 and you can see most of the columns have disappeared. The coloured boxes no longer have smaller, dark squares within them. This is obviously too high of a contrast and you would never realistically set it to 100. Bringing up the contrast control again, I began lowering the contrast until I could barely make out the vertical column on the far left, labelled 1018. It's hard to see on camera, but at a contrast level of 75, I was able to barely make out the last column from my usual viewing position. I continued lowering the contrast at this point just to see if it would make a difference. I didn't see any, so I set the value back to 75. This is 10 points lower than the original contrast setting of 85. The clipping pattern in the evaluation menu is another way of confirming whether the contrast level is set to the right number. You should be able to make out the concentric squares on the green pattern at the current contrast setting. It's harder to make out on the red in the video, but I can assure you the concentric squares are there. For the blue one, you can only make out two of the concentric squares. I lowered the contrast and I didn't see any new concentric squares being revealed on either the red or blue pattern. As I got closer to zero, the green concentric squares disappeared. This told me that the contrast was perfectly fine at 75. The brightness option is in the setup menu. I set the brightness to 100 just to see what the columns would look like on the test pattern. Here the exposure is 50% on my phone and you can barely make anything out on video. Setting the exposure to 100% gives you a better idea of what you'll see. I'll skip the rest of this as I couldn't capture the screen adequately with the phone I'm recording with and upping the exposure in post didn't make the bars visible. I'll just say that I reduced the brightness slightly from 50 to 48 so that the second bar from the right was barely visible. Here's the brightness set to 100 just so you know which bar I'm talking about. The guide mentions that 99.9% .9 of modern displays get the setting right out of the box so it's not worth messing around with the colour on tint, at least for the purposes of this video. Sharpness was set to 10 out of the box, I upped it to the maximum just to see what it would do to the test pattern. You can see that there is a halo effect around the edges of all of the lines. In addition to this, the higher sharpness level introduces the white rectangles around the far edge of the test pattern. I ended up turning the sharpness all the way back down to 13 which is just 3 steps above what it was originally. I just felt that the thinner lines were a little sharper at this level, nothing you'd notice from a regular viewing distance so I probably didn't have to change this setting. You'll find the colour temperature option in picture options and then white balance. I set the colour temperature to warm too a little while ago as it felt right at the time. Looking at the test pattern you can see the whites on the far right and left have a yellow tint when on warm too. Changing this to warm one gave the best results. Anything below and I noticed a slight blue tint in the test pattern which meant the colours were far too cool. The guide does mention setting the final colour space, but sadly the PS5 is stuck on YUV422, which essentially means it can't display 10-bit 444 content. From research, this is a PS5 limitation, so nothing much I can do. If this video gets enough attention, I'll recalibrate using a dedicated Blu-ray player. Comment below if you'd like to see this. For the colour space evaluation, there are a few areas like chroma alignment and chroma bursts that'll need some due diligence before I can properly assess them, so I'll move on to things I can do as part of this basic calibration guide. First up is chroma upsampling error and this pertains to the diagonal patterns you can see at the top and bottom of the TV. If all of the lines are perfectly diagonal with no zigzagging effect then it's a pass. It's hard to see clearly on the video but in person the diagonal lines are smooth with a minor zigzagging issue on the top left diagonal pattern. The black to grey, yellow to blue, blue to red and light grey to medium grey vertical bars are for checking ramps. A ramp is a term used to describe a smooth gradient of colour that smoothly transitions from one to another. In the patterns I didn't spot any bands or streaks which meant things were good in this regard. 
The gamma tracking at the top should show a single block for each of the six rectangles. For me, there is some deviation here as you can see the center rectangle faintly flash in and out if you look very closely. For a first time calibration, I won't mess around with the gamma and I'll revisit this at a later point. The color space conversion section pattern determines if there are any issues converting from YCBCR to RGB. Put simply, if there is less color information in the RGB color space when translating, then we'll know with this pattern. If there are the same number of smaller green and red squares, then it means the color space conversion is being done correctly. In person, the last three squares of each are clipped and the others can be made out. It's harder to see in this video, but I can assure you that the number is identical. The Spears and Munsell guide mentions that if you only see a one box difference, consider this test a pass. Once I was done with the SDR portion of the calibration, I punched in the same values in the HDR filler maker mode as the values do not translate across. The guide did mention that newer TVs generally derive the HDR settings from the SDR settings, but that didn't seem to be the case for my LG CX. I've put all of the calibration settings in the description if you want more detail. Here is the HDR demo footage, the footage on the left is before calibration and the footage on the right is after calibration. Can you see any major differences? If I'm being honest, the footage doesn't look all that different. This is something I expected as I didn't have to mess around with the settings too much and because it was my first time calibrating there were some areas I wasn't comfortable changing. I'll do a follow up video once again more experience and dabble in the more advanced areas. I do hope you picked something up from this video that you can apply to your settings for a better viewing experience. Turning off the advanced mode settings is the minimum you should do. Thanks everyone for watching, if you enjoyed the video a like would be appreciated. If you're still here, I'm going to guess you enjoyed the video so why not subscribe? I'm open to covering any tech item out there so suggestions are welcome in the comments. See you in the next one.